I have a script today because this is a long review with a lot of information, so I'm going to be looking at my phone in A-roll shots, so bear with me. Hey there, Tarek here, and today I'm going to be talking about the BenQ GW2270. For those of you looking to buy this monitor, you need to look out for the model number, because there are actually three different models of this monitor that determine what port selection and features that you'll get. Um, the three models are the GW2270, the GW2270H, and the GW2270HM. Although the monitor that I have only says GW2270 in the top right corner, it's actually the GW2270HM, as you can see in the information section of the settings menu. All three models seem to be using the same VA panel and with the same body housing for said panel, but with a few differences. And here's a graph of those differences. All three models have one VGA port, so if that happens to be your connection of choice, then these monitors all function the same for you, since VGA doesn't carry an audio signal, so just buy whichever you find for the least amount of money. But if you need a DVI port, the 2270H does not have a DVI port, so get either the 2270 or the HM one. When it comes to HDMI ports, the plain 2270 has no HDMI ports. The 2270H has not just one, but two HDMI ports. So if you need multiple HDMI ports, this might be the choice for you. And the 2270HM has just one HDMI port. And the only one of the three that has a headphone jack for audio output is the 2270H. The 2270HM is the only one that has an audio in jack, which is not the same thing as a headphone jack. And the reason for that is because the HM is the only one that has built-in speakers, so that if you're using either the VGA or DVI port, both of which don't carry an audio signal, you can use the audio in jack to output your computer's sound through the monitor's built-in speakers. You cannot use the audio in jack on the HM model the same way you would use a headphone jack, meaning you cannot connect headphones or external speakers to the HM monitor. If you need a headphone jack in your monitor, then the H model can do that for you since it does have an actual headphone jack. And to address the quality of the built-in speakers in the HM model, they are barely usable. And that's only in scenarios where the audio you're listening to is really clear and mixed well, but if you listen to anything that's quieter than usual, you're gonna have a bad time, since even when you max out the volume on the monitor, and when you max out the volume on Windows, it's still not that loud. And they somehow manage to sound tinny, but have muffled highs at the same time, and the low mids can get distorted sometimes. So TLDR, don't use the built-in speakers, you should connect headphones or speakers to your PC for better audio. Last thing to address on this list is response time. It's the same with all three, so basically the gray to gray response time is 5 milliseconds, which is common these days for regular TN panels, most IPS panels are either 5 milliseconds or 6 milliseconds, and the overall response time or maximum response time can be up to 18 milliseconds. Overall, from my personal experience, it's nothing noticeable, it's not bad, I've gained like a decent amount on it, even playing like Fortnite, it doesn't like serve as like a massive disadvantage or anything. So honestly, response time isn't bad at all. Next, let's talk about image quality, which of course matters a lot when it comes to monitors. It's a VA panel, so it's better than most TN panels in terms of color accuracy and viewing angles, but it's not gonna be as good as a typical IPS. Overall, the panel is good, but something to keep in mind with the BenQ VA panel is the more of an angle you look at it, the more desaturated colors tend to look. Even when I'm facing the display head on and I look at the icons on the bottom left corner, just from the angle that I look at the corner of the display at from where I'm sitting, they look slightly more desaturated than looking at them head on. It's subtle and it's a minor nitpick. It's not very noticeable, but it's just something that you should know because it's something that I noticed when I got the monitor and it was something that mildly annoyed me, but in day-to-day -day use, honestly, it's not that noticeable, but just keep that in mind. 
Also, another nitpick that I have is that my panel actually came with one single dead pixel. It's on the top right quadrant of the display and it isn't that glaring and most of the time I didn't notice it, but it is a shame. Now, this is a 1080p monitor, so it looks good, but it won't blow you away. It's not 1440p, it's not 4K. Now, refresh rate. Um, Windows detects this as a 60 hertz panel. But on CNET's website, they state that this monitor has a range of 50 to 76 hertz. And on Walmart's website, it just says that it's a 76 hertz monitor, which might be mildly misleading since the option isn't even shown by default in Windows Display Adapter properties. You might be able to overclock it to 76 hertz, but I'm not going to recommend doing that since I personally have no experience overclocking monitors and I don't know if it'll void your warranty, so do so at your own risk. Something nice about this monitor is the fact that it has an internal power brick. So no ugly brick has to dangle off your desk or lay on the floor. Me being someone who tries to put some effort with cable management, I really do appreciate that. And another thing to keep in mind is that some BenQ monitors have a cable management compartment in the neck of the stand. This isn't one of those monitors. It doesn't have built-in cable management, so I had to do my own cable management. I have these clips that have 3M adhesive on them, and they stick really well on the back of the neck, and since it's flat, it's really easy to place them there. I just put a few on the back, and then I wrap the power cable and HDMI cable through it, and it gives you a much cleaner result than letting the cables just hang and seeing those two wires dangle there. So overall, I do recommend this monitor. Again, keep in mind which of the three have the features that you need most. I do recommend keeping an eye out for when it goes on sale. It does go on sale occasionally on Staples and on Amazon, and it sometimes costs less at Walmart, so just check all those websites. And overall, I think it's a good daily monitor. It won't perform as well as something far more expensive, but this obviously is operating within the budget range of things. So if you just want something functional that does look good and that doesn't suck as much as a TN panel, then I recommend the BenQ GW2270 series of monitors. So I hope this video helped in your buying decision if you were looking to buy this monitor. And if you like this video, give it a like. And if you want to subscribe to see more videos, I'd appreciate that. Um, if not, then uh, just have a great day.